I've got some work to do on my sled, and since I've never shown it on here, I want to show it to you guys quickly. Have a quick little discussion on what's transpired, because I've had it probably two weeks, three weeks, maybe two weeks, and it's been uh, it's been a ride since I've had it. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at it here now, and then I'll give you a quick explanation. Here's the sled. It's a 2008 600 RS. The chassis is pretty straight. Um, this kind of my most concern because it's not that easy to fix. I hope that I only needed a few other like minor things so I could fix those up. Have a little bit of a project and something to ride over the winter time. Obviously now it's ended up being a little more than that and it is what it is. The current problem. So these engines have crank bearings that need to be greased manually. Um, the engine gas and oil doesn't get to them. Um, so I went to do that and once I pulled the steel off the bearing was trashed. Right? No way you could have known that. He didn't know that. But the cage of the bearing failed. I don't know, it's kind of odd to me the cage would fail. It's like a steel cage. I bought a new bearing to look at it and I was going to do some other stuff I'll explain. Um, and it's just an odd failure. I've never seen a bearing fail or just a cage failed and all the balls are still intact and still rolling. The sled ran fine. It ripped hard. There was no indication that it was trashed like that. Think about it now and think about the engine noise. It probably was a bearing noise, which I was thinking was just clutch noise. I'm not used to sleds, so that's a good learning experience for next time. That's not a normal noise, and it's definitely a bearing noise, because it, sound, it sounded like a bearing noise, right? So I flip the camera around, I'll show you what's up, and then we're going to get to it. So we're on the left side of the sled, where the clutches are. Primary clutch is off, of course. You can see this is the crank bearing, and I've also done some foolishness already on it. So originally I thought, because you can see the bearing just kind of rests in the case, you can't see it, but there's no snapping, there's nothing that holds these in. So looking at it quickly, I thought, and my, well actually my dad gave me this idea, that you, we could just weld, weld two bolts into it, put a puller on the crank and pull on these two bolts, and pull the bearing out and slip another one in and just do it quick and dirty for the season. Because we measured the crank run out, and there's 11 thousandths run out on this crank. We measured on the nose here. You're supposed to measure that outside of the engine on V-blocks, obviously, but at like 11 thousand run out here, I bet you it's not gonna be fine on the bench. But just for this season, I wanted to put the put a bearing into it cheap just to get it running. I thought it might might have worked for a bit, and it would have worked if if you know if um, so. The problem was there's a there's a key in these bearings, not a key, but a, a pin in these bearings, and it pins it to the case so the bearing can't walk, obviously, because it is a press fit under the crank or an interference fit. But we thought we could heat it up, which you can see, which is why I put some weld around here because I was trying to get it to heat up and expand and pull out and slide it off. Obviously it didn't budge, um, and I had a good pull on it too, everything was pretty solid there. So of course that didn't work, and now here we are. So that's where we're at. I'm going to pull the engine, because either way the engine's got to come out, and I'm going to take it apart, have a look at, have a look on the inside. Nine chances out of ten I'm going to rebuild this motor, and worst case we can still get another engine to swap, but we got to take it apart either way. So I'm going to start that now and rip into it.
That's it, we're all done. The engine is totally disconnected from the sled. I left it in because I'm going to film it as a video now in a second just so you can see me pulling it out. Uh, but I wanted to pull the camera in while it's still on the sled so I can show you where everything goes if you're trying to do this on your own. So I'll spin you around. We can have a quick look. So let me retrace my steps here. We took the secondary clutch off and there's a little brace that goes along here. It goes from that bolt you can see to the back. I took the carbs off. Just got them dangling. I've seen some people say to take the, the, uh, take the reeds out, take the boots off. I don't necessarily know if that's, that's uh, required, you know what I mean? It looks like it'll come out no sweat with those still on. I did take the Y pipe off for the exhaust, because that'll definitely be a bit cumbersome. I'll just gotta come off anyway, so it's no big deal. I had to take the, uh, the recoil off. You can see the little knot I got tied there. I took the handle off, just tied a knot, and left it sitting in. Those electrical connectors there, those are the only electrical connectors I've seen for the engine. There's also, uh, on, on the head, there's a coolant temp sensor. The RS's don't have a knock sensor. I think the HOs do, the 600 HOs. I'm not totally sure about that, but that's the knock sensor. It plugs in kind of up the, kind of up there a little bit. You can see the plug, actually. So for coolant, there's a little tiny hose right there. On the right side of the sled, it comes off the head and goes back towards the coolers. And on the bottom, and this is actually where you drain it, there's one big hose down there. So as you can see, it's a simple motor. I'm gonna pull it out here now and put it on the bench and have a look at it. Hmm. Maybe the reeds do have to come out. I should trust the people who have done this before. Yeah, those reeds gotta come out. It just barely clears those reeds. It's like Jenga. Yeah. Clear of all the electrical. Jess comes out, eh? Cool. It's a pretty cool engine to look at, actually. It's got these rave valves. Your exhaust valve system, they call it rave on this one. Rotax adjustable variable exhaust. Cool, eh? This is your water pump here. Obviously, coolant goes in. The water pump's kind of cool. It's kind of good. It's, it's like, uh, it's geared to the crank, obviously. And I'm not sure how, like, what this plate here is for, but maybe there's a nut on the back. I think that might be how you remove it. So we'll have a look at that later. So you can look into the cylinders and see everything pretty easily. That's an interesting design, actually. You don't usually see it that clearly on a dirt bike or something. The porting is pretty different. That's cool. That piston doesn't look too hot. <laughs> oh, well. We'll have a look. We'll have a look later once we get the top end off. I think I'm going to call it there for tonight, though. We got the engine out, which is all I needed, and that cylinder looks really rough. That piston looks really rough, <laughs> the PTO side. So, whatever, it is what it is. If we gotta put a new top end into it, maybe that'll change some things. Maybe, well, you know, obviously, you gotta see how the cylinders are. If it's just a piston looking a bit rough, we'll do a set of pistons. If the cylinder's trash, then we'll probably just, I'll probably just get that used motor. Can't be any worse. I mean, it can't be worse than bottom end trashed, cylinder's trash. Like, you know, if it's that bad, it's time for it's time for a replacement, so we'll see. We'll pull it apart tomorrow and have a look at it. But for tonight, super easy. Get the engine out. I'm happy with it. It's gonna be ha it's gonna be a easy job to get it back into. The whole sled's been awesome to work on. Like I said, no surprises. So that you know that was a good that was a good uh, that was a good help. But I'll see you guys for tonight, and we'll come back tomorrow.